Welcome to ECE 463 Modern Control. In today's lecture, I'm just going to give an overview of what the class is going to be including, as well as the syllabus and the grading scheme. Now, a little bit of background. Control systems is all about feedback. The idea is to take a system that behaves poorly and improve the response using feedback. You can also take an unstable system and make it stable using feedback. For example, when you start learning to ride a bicycle, you first fall down, skin your knees, very sad, but eventually you learn how to adjust your weight to keep your balance on a bike. What you're doing is you're learning a feedback control scheme to balance an unstable system. Now the control course is offered at NDSU are 461 control systems in the fall. That covers programmable logic controllers, PLCs, those do things like control car washes. I can turn on and off valves, turn on and off pumps, and has a graphical language interface. It also looks at stabilizing dynamic systems using lead lag compensators, PID control, and digital control. This class, 463 Modern Control, is offered spring semester. Here we're looking at stabilizing systems using full state feedback. That includes modeling dynamic systems, both linear and nonlinear, Pole placement, placing the poles of the closed-loop system, state estimators, and optimal control. It's also the foundation for many courses that follow. Adaptive control, robust control, nonlinear control, to name a few. In first-term summer, advanced controls robotics is offered. There we're looking at modeling and controlling robotic arms, and that covers forward kinematics, inverse kinematics, path planning, dynamics, and control of robotic arms. So specifically with this class, modern control. Modern control has the origins of the 1950s and the space race. In the 1950s, the United States and the Soviet Union were competing to be the first into space. The problem the United States had is the approach we were using tended to result in rockets that spun out in glorious fireballs, like so. Russia, on the other hand, beat the United States into space. They were the first to put a satellite into orbit. They were the first to put a person into orbit. That led to the U.S. panicking in the 1950s, trying to find out what the Soviets knew that we didn't know. We started reading the Russian literature, and what we found is they were using a matrix-based approach to designing feedback controllers. That's called modern control. Now, the topics covered in modern control are as follows. The start of the semester, we look at dominant poles in MATLAB. What a dominant pole is, is given a bunch of poles in the system, or the the roots. The dominant pole tends to dominate the response. That tends to be this pole which is furthest to the right, closest to the origin. That leads to analysis. If I have a complicated system, I can tell you pretty much how it's going to behave based upon the dominant poles. It also leads to design. If I have a certain response, I'm basically specifying where I want the dominant poles to be. In week two, we start looking at state space. State space is a matrix-based representation of dynamic systems. Computers like matrices, and likewise, in MATLAB, it's very easy to implement a dynamic system using matrices, much, much easier than using a transfer function. And the third week, we start looking at Lagrangian dynamics. With Lagrangian dynamics, it's a way to determine the dynamics of both linear and nonlinear systems, and the approach is based on energy. If I specify the energy in the system and how the energy moves about, I specify the dynamics. And with that, we'll be looking at coming up the dynamics for systems like a cart and pendulum system, a double pendulum. And with that, you can do things like dynamic simulations. Here's the MATLAB program we'll be looking at. It simulates a double pendulum under freefall. With no input, it falls. And these are systems we'll be using to test the feedback controllers we design in this class, all in simulation in MATLAB. That'll be followed by the first test. Watching systems fall isn't necessarily that much fun. We'd like to control them. So I can take the cart and move it to a certain spot, take a ball and beam system, have the ball go to a certain spot. To do that, we'll use feedback. Week six, we look at full state feedback. And here the idea is if I have an nth order system, I've got n states. If I feedback the gains, I've got n degrees of freedom to place the n eigenvalues. Conceptually, I should be able to solve n equations and n unknowns. The problem is how do you do that? That is the approach we'll be looking at, a thing called Bhaskura, 
or how to place the poles, choose the feedback gain to place all end poles. Followed by week 7, we'll look at server compensators. Typically, I'll try to track a constant set point or sinusoidal set point. How do you do that? One approach is to design a post filter, the servo compensator, and then use full state feedback to control the system. Week 8, we'll look at observers. Now, the problem with full state feedback is you have to know the states. Sometimes the states aren't measured or difficult to measure. In that case, we'll build a state estimator or an observer. It basically is a model of the plant with the feedback gain to force the observer states to converge to the plant states. Once I know that, I can then feed back the state estimates. If I have disturbances on the plant, that's going to mess up my state estimates. So I augment the system with more states. That's the observers with disturbances. That'll be followed by test number two. Once that's done, we'll look at optimal control. The problem with pole placement is I can place all the poles anywhere I want. That's the strength. That's also the weakness. If I don't really know where the poles belong, I'm kind of at a loss. What optimal control does is it says I define a cost function. I want to go from point A to point B while minimizing the input. What's the optimal path? Or conversely, what are the optimal feedback gains? So with optimal control, we'll cover crackless variations, how to find the optimization of a function. Uh, optimal control, what are the optimal feedback gains given a cost function, both without and with its server compensators. That also works with observers. I might want to find out what's the optimal observer. And that leads to Kelman filter. Uh, after that, we'll look at a few variations, such as LQG LTR control. That's how I define a reference model of the plant's supposed to behave. Can I use full state feedback to force the plant to track this, the reference model? And there's also a thing called variable structures, VSS control which is how anti-lock brakes work in cars. I can choose the feedback gains to specify how the system should behave and use a relay to chatter going on and off. That's followed by test number three. In terms of course requirements, what you'll need in this class is signals and systems because we use Laplace transforms fairly extensively. Calculus for taking full and partial derivatives. That's when we do the Euler-Lagrange equations and Lagrangians as well as Math 129 matrix algebra. We'll be doing extensive manipulation of matrices in this class, and likewise, we'll be using what you learned in Math 129. Also, MATLAB is very, very, very useful in this class. We do a great deal of matrix manipulations, linear simulations, and nonlinear simulations, and MATLAB is a very useful tool for all that. The grading scheme in this class is we'll have three tests, a homework set, and a final, all with equal weighting. And the great breakdown is the standard, 90 to 100 is an A, 80 to 89 is a B, and so on. For curving, I will curve down, or I might curve down, but I won't curve up, meaning that if you have a 90%, guaranteed you have an A, no matter what the curve is. If you're sitting at 89%, maybe, maybe not you have an A. It depends upon the curve. Sometimes the tests are harder than I anticipated, so sometimes I'll curve down, sometimes not. But again, if you have 90%, you have an A. And part of the reason for doing that is if you work together and learn the material, I'm happy to give out all A's. Uh, however, midterms are independent effort, so please don't work together on the midterms. That will hurt your grade. The homeworks, you can work together. Studying for the midterms, you can work together. But test and final are independent effort. Finally, this class is offered with a HyFlex model. Uh, the course is offered three different ways. You can take the class in person. That's Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday at 10 a.m. You can take it via live streaming on Zoom. You can also take the class online. All the lecture notes, homework sets, solutions, YouTube videos are all posted on Bison Academy. Uh, for example, the homepage for 463 Modern Control looks as follows. I've got the syllabus in one column, the YouTube lectures, which aren't posted yet, but they will be shortly. If there is sample code that corresponds to the lecture notes, I'll post that here, along with the homework sets and solutions. You're free to take the course any way you like. You can even change how you want to take the course on a daily basis. So if you want to show up in person one day, live stream the next day, uh, just watch the YouTube video another day, that's fine. It's your choice. However, there are deadlines in this class. 
Regardless of how you take the class, homework sets and tests do have deadlines. Homework is typically due on Mondays, unless Monday's a holiday, then it's due on Wednesday. Tests are due at midnight. Neither the homework sets nor the tests will be accepted after the solutions are posted, so please get them turned in before solutions are posted. Also, if you need help, I have office hours on Zoom throughout the week. I'm usually on the computer during the week, so if you have a question, just email me and I'll probably be able to answer it right away. Also, there are solutions to previous homework sets posted under on Bison Academy. If you go under homework sets and solutions, I've got the homeworks from the previous four years, the solutions to the homework sets. Those serve as good guides if you're stuck and don't really know how to approach a homework set. Now, overall, this is a, what I consider to be one of the funner classes I have to teach. It uses MATLAB extensively. We simulate linear, nonlinear systems. We manipulate n by n matrices. It has a heavy use of matrix algebra, but it's kind of fun. We get to do things like stabilize Cartan pendulum systems, stabilize the double pendulum system, stabilize ball and beam systems. Uh, basically do quite a bit of nonlinear modeling and simulation and control this class. So hope you enjoy it. That's kind of the overview of ECE 463 modern control.